So, are you doing a remedy in astrology, through Vedic astrology, numerology, whatever it is, that could be harming you more than helping you? That's what we're going to discuss today. It's very important. And as always, if you want to know what your planetary alignments are, all your astrological details, especially in Vedic astrology, you can go to karisastrology.com where you'll find my books, reports, consultation on option six and beyond. And especially now I have a progression reading. The most important, it's like once you know the progression, you know where your life is headed. So, because I'm also about to teach this in my Nandi Nadi course as well on my academy. Progression, those, those are the beauty. Those are like the, that final stroke of your painting is your progression. Once you know that, you'll know why. You suffered till the age of 28 financially and then boom, your rocket went off. So, remedies. And please don't mind if you see dog hairs because I always have dog hairs. And once I upload my video and I see like, oh my God, there's a dog hair, there's this, there's that. I've got six dogs. So you're going to see like nail marks, all of that. So don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. So neither should you. So anyway, remedies that you should not do. Number one, please, at any cost, don't do remedies. Oh, how do I get my lost love back? My girlfriend broke up with me. I need some mantra. I need some something to bury somewhere and to do something to get them back. Or my boyfriend is not talking to me. Please bring them back in my life. When you start doing remedies to bringing that person back, first of all, what you're doing is this. This is your, this is your significant other. Okay. You bring your self-esteem down right there. You tell universe, you tell the universe that I do not have the capacity to function in my life until I have this one person and that specific person. Why? Because they have a hold over me like, like a dark cloud, like magic, right? You have given them the entire authority to make your life great. And until you get them, nothing happens. And we do these dumb kind of stuff. I should say, I was going to use the curse word, but we do these dumb kind of stuff in our 20s to get our exes back. And we're doing this mantra and going to this temple. Listen, number one. If that person is destined to be with you, you can go. When you break up, you can go to the Himalayas and live and they will come there and follow you and marry you. Number one. Number two, when you use some form of force to bring them back to you, you're first of all weakening your son because you're telling the universe, I cannot function on my own. I need somebody to function. It's like a king saying, I need all these people around me to be the king. I need somebody to praise me that I'm a king. And not to mention, when you especially use Tantra to bring somebody back in your life, right? In India, you have like a wholesale of all these different powers and siddhis that you can use to bring the lover back. Those people who do use these type of things to bring somebody back in their life have the worst end days of their life. But think about it. Think about it. You don't have enough confidence in your life. You, your self-esteem is so low that you are begging somebody to come back to you when they do not want to be with you. When they don't want to be with you, they feel like they, they moved on. Is that how low your self-esteem is? Like if I look back in my 20s, now with the age that I'm at, if somebody broke up with me, I would be like, have a good day. I'm out. I got I to gotta, I gotta hang out with my friends. I got to do something else. I would have been that. But again, it is that immaturity of our 20s that makes us think that this person who left is our entire world. 
And in your 40s, you realize that, my God, thank you for breaking up with me. Right? In, in your 20s, you're praying to God for them to come back to you. In your 40s, you realize, oh, my God, thank you for doing what you did. I would have been in a much worse situation. Number two, the other. Um, and I've made this on my Instagram too. Do not use VG boards. You know, you, you, you I go to like these generic stores in US. And in toy aisle, they will have VG board. You don't know what you're messing with. Your entire life can turn upside down if you're a teen and on your Friday night you wanna you don't want to go out. You're bored and your f- group of friends do this stuff. You're welcoming. You're opening those gates of hell. Have you seen the um, what was that movie? It was in the late nineties about a ship going beyond the boundaries of Neptune and coming back through the gates of hell. I forgot the name of that movie. That's one of my favorite movies. But I haven't watched it in so long that I don't even remember uh, what movie is that. But it's that same guy from Jurassic Park 1. Uh, You know, the paleontologist, he's in there as well. But that's what happens. You open those gates. So don't do those things. Number three, do not watch things connected with horror, magic, uh, pishaj, gens, this and that. I know everybody is crazy on podcasts and this and that because I am now like literally doing reading of people who said I want to start a podcast. I guess it's a big thing in India that I want to start a podcast about ghosts and all these things. The moment you do that, the moment you're in that world, 24-7, you are now attracting. They're, those those spirits are like, oh, because remember, even spirits want to be seen. They want to be shown. They want to gain the fame on social media. You think it's only the angels? You think it's only the devatas and gods? They themselves want to. Be part of this entire scheme of Rahu and social media. And once you get into that, once you either watch it like binge watching it, or you are kind of like wanting to get into this world, you better know what you're doing. Because once you get into it and you will attract things that while your podcast is not there, while you're alone at home, while you're trying to sleep, they're there. They are there. They're watching you. You don't even know you could be sleeping and that energy could be right next to you laying. Because it's like you have become this uh, fly trapper. Like a bright light to attract all the flies and mosquitoes. So be very careful when you want to go into these things. This is why I had to like kind of make a video on this now because... So many of you are feel like, hey, do you have the combinations to do podcasts and especially podcasts related to Tantra, this and that? Even if you do, you better be very careful. Because now you're the beacon. And you're going to attract things that you may not be able to handle. The last thing. Do not ever sacrifice animals because of the fact your daughter's not getting married. You don't have a job. You want to become an IS officer. You want to do this and anything material. When you sacrifice animal for your stupid gains in life. That's what I call it at my age now. Oh, I want fame. I now want this and I want that. But if you sacrifice a life, it's going to backfire on you. The, and a sacrifice bad is not bad. But do you know the only time you should do sacrifices is people who are deep into Tantra, who are not caring for fame, money, fortune, and they are only acquiring it to attain higher siddhis. That is it. But just for because you're 34 years old, you're not getting married 
this and this isn't happening, your promotion is not happening, and now you're seeking a remedy where sacrifice of either like, I'm sure you guys all know, like water buffalo, goat, uh, chickens, all this is happening. C cut it out. Cut out this nonsense. The reason why I'm being so blunt, because I'm looking out for you. I'm looking out for you all. A real Siddha, whether it's a Tantric Siddha, whether it's a Karamkan, they, they will tell you that unless you're focusing on complete renunciant lifestyle and you want to go into Tantra because you want to attain Shiva, then you do it. Not just because you're not getting a job with the favorite company or promotion. No. Because at the end, you end up becoming the sacrificial animal. So these are the things you need to be very careful of when you're diving into as a remedial thing. And remember, there's once you know Nandi Nadi, once you know Nandi Nadi that I'm currently teaching, you will never need a remedy. You will never wear a single gemstone. You won't be going to temples on certain days to do some things, to do certain, to get certain things in your life. That's the beauty. This is why I so adore and respect Nandi Nadi because it just shows you, you don't need to do none of the external things. You just need to align your life. Once you align with the chart, See, if your chart is this way and you're this way, nothing is happening until you yourself become this way. So it's like your chart is like this, right? And you're inside growing like this and you're just staying like this. And you're like, why isn't anything working? Why isn't anything working? That's because you are not aligned like this, like that energy of that chart. Once it's aligned, this is when you know, oh, wow, now everything is happening. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below so you don't miss these type of videos. We want to know where your planner replacements are, all your astrological details, including my Nandi Nari course. Go to karasastrology.com. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.